How big is that number? Well, let me tell you how big it is. In the universe, the smallest unit of measurable information, material we know anything about, is the electron. How many electrons are there? 10 to the 80th power of electrons in the entire universe. Take all 225 billion galaxies, each comprised of over half a billion stars, but we have 10 to the 80th power of electrons. Every atom has at least one electron. So that's the number of electrons, and this is in the data. I wrote a book, uh, Why Do Men Believe Evolution? Against All Odds. You can get it through the museum. It gives this data from the technical literature. Well, that's the number of electrons in existence. Let's fill the entire universe with electrons. What's that number? If you were to fill the entire universe with electrons so you couldn't cram one more electron in the entire universe, the number would be 10 to the 130th power. Well, wait a minute. 10 to the 157th is light years beyond 10 to the 130th. The odds would be easier that you could cram the universe full of electrons, mark one electron, blindfold a man, and tell him he had one chance, and he had to do it within a specific day. He had one chance, blindfolded, not knowing where that one electron had been marked. The odds are that he could do that easier than Jesus Christ could have fulfilled even those 33 primary prophecies. I'm trying to tell you, this book of Isaiah is not cunningly devised fables. This is not old wives' tales or old men's stories around the campfire. This is absolute truth. Well, now, with the time remaining, let's see if we can cover some of these other areas. So we've talked about cause and effect, the first law of thermodynamics. We've talked about shaking terribly the earth, geophysics, the branch. We've talked about the probability. Now, in chapter 6, verse 3, one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible, we find a statement where Isaiah is transported to heaven, and there... The song is holy, 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 referring to God. Three in one. Watch very closely. The Bible states in Romans chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. We are without excuse. What's he saying? That which we can see and examine scientifically, that which we can measure and put numbers to, throws us directly in a confrontation with the truth of the Godhead. Holy, holy, holy. You see, we have space, Mass and time, that's all we have in the universe. Unlimited space. We have mass that we can measure. Time in progression. Now, Einstein demonstrated that those are all interrelated as one unity. Now, God the Father is represented by space. He's everywhere. We can't get away from Him. In Him we live and move and have our being. God the Son manifests himself at a period of time physically, and God the Holy Spirit manifests himself with the progress of the universe in the experience of our lives. So space, mass, and time, knowing that, we're then led to a better understanding of the Godhead. Now, with time flying so rapidly, let me just mention what else is available in scientific principle in this book of Isaiah. Holy, holy, holy has to do with astrophysics. And then in chapter 7, verse 14, we have the statement, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
That's anthropology, the study of man and in his ultimate form in the person of the Messiah. Chapter 9, verse 6, for unto us a child is born, a son is given. That's political science. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Chapter 11, verse 1, a stem of Jesse. That's political history. Chapter 13, verse 20, Babylon never to be inhabited again. That's because of the stratigraphy when it will burn after being revived. Chapter 4, verse, uh, 14, verse 12, weighed the mountains. That's geophysics and isostasy, meaning it all has to balance for the earth to work properly. Chapter 40, verse 22, planetary uh, sphericity, the circle of the earth, stretched out the heavens and on and on, the earth waxing old like a garment, and that's entropy. In the book of Isaiah, you need to take time to read it and see how many scientific principles you can find. I found 14 just by a single reading last evening. But the science behind the book or woven into the book is not the ultimate story. The ultimate story is that in chapter 53, a statement is made that this Messiah would come at the appointed time. That this Messiah would offer himself, would die for our sins, would be buried, would rise again, and would see his seed, and would prolong his days. Are you his seed? Would you like to be? Just open your heart and pray this prayer right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for caring enough to fulfill these prophecies. Thank you for caring enough to die for me, to be buried, to rise again, to be alive at this moment, knocking at my heart's door. I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, come in right now. I accept you as my Savior. I will serve you with all my heart. Thank you for letting me enjoy the blessings of eternity as being a part of your family. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.